Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne hackman Cardi. A few months ago, I saw an interview done by Faye Crevoche, and she was with Leslie Stahl in 60 Minutes talking about what's happening at the border of Southern California and Tijuana, in particular the Tijuana River, and all of the debris, the chemicals, the raw sewage that's going through that tributary into the ocean. It's a big concern, and I'm talking to Faye today about some of the work that she's doing at wildcoast.org. So stay tuned. Faye, how are you today? Good, thank you very much for interviewing me, and I'm happy to tell you about what's happening in the San Diego-Tijuana border, which is a lot. That's great. Well, well, before we get into the topic, can you just explain a little bit about your background for the audience? Okay. Uh, well, for li- for a living, you know what I do? I am the communications and policy uh, uh, director for Wild Coast Costa Salvaje. We are a nonprofit organization. We're really an international team that conserves coastal and marine ecosystems and wildlife, and that we are addressing climate change with natural solutions. As you know, climate change is very, very important these days for everybody because it's life and death for the species, the human species this time. So tell me, uh, I actually first uh, became aware of your work when you did an interview with Leslie Stahl for 60 Minutes and was fascinated by that work. So can you explain a little bit about what's going on between Tijuana and uh, Southern California border? You know, what happens is that Tijuana uh, grows uh, very fast, like crazy, because of the border, because of the, the, the sou- Southern California, because a lot of people come here thinking they will jump the border, they will get jobs in the United States. But then it's not so easy and they get stuck in Mexico, in Tijuana, and they want to leave. And so they get you, they get themselves put together little houses with all kinds of things they find you know, and in in places where they're not really organized to live. So, you know, and and then we have the Haitians who came, who were going to cross the border and couldn't. And uh, we have Central American immigrants who are trying to come and people from all over Mexico. So what happens in the border is that we don't have any urban planning and that we have people living all over canyons where there are no services, no electricity, not uh, potable water, and not sewage connections. So what you have is people living um, in terrible conditions. They steal the the electricity from the main lines uh, in the freeway, and um, the water just drizzles around and gets to the rivers. Um, And um, that is one one type of, of, um, you know, uh, uh, water that, that has organic matter that is coming. And Tijuana is also much higher geographically than um, San Diego, than the Southern California. So everything trickles down into the Tijuana River watershed. And from there, it crosses two walls. This is my, I laugh always at the wall. The wall don't even stop the trash, don't even stop plastics. We have incredible amount of waste tires, all kinds of furniture. Everything comes down with us waters under the barriers into the Tijuana River and the wars into the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. Terrible. And meanwhile, in the process, we all get sick, all who live here in these neighborhoods, both sides of the border, because that, that you know, water and trash does not recognize borders. And trash, you, you, you get, you know, in the tires, you get... Um, uh, water that stays in and it's perfect, a perfect vector for mosquitoes who produce dengue and, and yellow fever and all kinds of diseases. Zika, remember Zika, the scare? It's the same mosquito. Anyway, so uh, we've been fighting against this because of the, of, of the ocean. We care about the ocean and all the trash that is now being putting in the ocean is really beginning to make a dent on the ocean capacity to produce the oxygen of the entire planet. The mm-hmm. all of the, the, uh, we are the blue planet. The ocean produces, I thought 70% of the oxygen, I was reading a scientific paper, it's 85% of the oxygen of the planet. And also it controls climate because it absorbs most of the CO2, which is terrible, 
for us, for us as a species, the CO2 from the atmosphere. Now we are spending, you know, our time putting into the into the, the ocean all types of trash in amounts that are growing exponentially. And so you have the patches that are floating, but under you have also a terrible amount of, of plastic and they're killing plants and animals, plankton, phytoplankton, which is what absorbs the CO2. So we are messing up our environment and basically we could say that we're societal. So we really need to change how we do things. And here we have the, you know, the contrast also of a uh, third world nation with lots of poverty, Mexico, and the richest country in the world, the US. So also when you see the border, it's like, uh, but everybody suffers because you cannot, you know, if you don't solve the problem in Mexico, there's no way of stopping it in one side. This is a binational problem. The Tijuana River is a binational river. It goes to Mexico, US, Mexico, US, and comes out to the ocean in the US, in Imperial Beach, where our offices are. So it's, it's a problem close to our heart. We started fighting it in 2004, asking for clean water. And we've been going and then it gets better. The Mexican government did, did the build uh, treatment plants um, that actually three, two function very well. One, they didn't put any maintenance, so it's not functioning. Mm -hmm. So it's a hundred and um, it's a hundred, uh, no, a thousand seven hundred liters per second. And that is the river that goes directly into the Pacific Ocean. It's not being cleaned. That's what you could see in the 60 minutes that I keep calling the Caca River, <laughs> but that's what it is. Um, now there is a solution though. The Tijuana government hire a company, but it's a whole story. That is a separate story. Uh, we call the Mexican, I call the Mexican company of, that, that builds um, treatment plants. And I gave her a business model that, you know, they would clean the water and then they would sell it into the Valle de Guadalupe. If you've not heard, that's the um, wine country of Mexico. It's yeah. an hour away from Tijuana near Ensenada, but not on the ocean, just a little bit east. So they were shrinking the business because of lack of water. They had been using all the water of the underground, the aquifers, and they were finished. And now the ocean water was seeping into the aquifers and the wine was beginning to be salty. And Europe was basically that wine. There is protectionism in the US. Hey, yes. So um, it goes to Europe. It's export to Europe. So, you know, it took many years to get the, the name of the Mexican wines up. And now it was, you know, bad. So this water is needed. So it's a good business. I thought, I don't know anything about business. They did the due diligence and they decided it was not a good business. Yeah. So we, I decided to call another company, an Israeli company. They are the experts and they are doing it. Wow. And, yeah, and they are not only the state of Baja is not having to pay or getting to debt. They're coming with their own investment, their own money. They are investing, taking all the risk, paying this Baja California state government per liter of water that they take, dirty water, sewage water, cleaning it, and they are uh, building to sell in the in the wine country. It's going to be great, I think, because then you have you will be developing much more wine country that we have, because always the limit then was the water, and then you have all this river of caca not going to the ocean, which is what I care about, right? That's my reward, my win-win. There's win, 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 three wins. The state, <laughs> we the people who don't want to have that horrible uh, water in the ocean. And again, we the people who need oxygen, the planet. Anyway, so um, now we have still water coming into the Tijuana River. And now we have a tsunami of plastics. A I mean, you have to see it, mountains. And this is the plastic who doesn't go to the ocean, who gets stuck in the mud because the rest goes to the ocean. And it is uh, investing all the state parks. You want to go on a trail, you begin to go on a trail and soon enough it's covered by plastic. You don't see it because they have a lot of growth, you know, trees, flowers. Yeah. And in the trail, it's full of plastic. Who knows how deep? It's every year, plastic, um, uh, uh, mud, plastic mud, it's a pie. I don't know how deep the pie goes. But that's the lucky thing because it doesn't go to the ocean. But it's there and it's creating a disease for everybody, both yeah. sides. So 
we were lucky enough. We applied for a grant and we got a grant and we just built the first, as you will see, I'll send you the video. Uh, uh, we built a trash room, a device in one of the tributary of the rivers that holds everything that comes down in the river with the water. This yeah. is not a big river. Basically, it only has sewage water, trickles of sewage water. It's in Los Laureles. And it didn't exist when I did the 60 Minutes program. It was in planning. So we won and we already built it. And as you can see, I'm showing it. And um, if we have stopped over 4,500 kilograms of, of um, trash from going to the ocean, to the Tijuana River and to the ocean. Then we sort it and we uh, separate it, we sort it, we weigh it. So we have real data, hard data to know what's coming down. And we are recycling, repurposing it in the community and then recycling it. And only what we cannot do anything with, we goes, goes to the landfill. That's a new project. This project comes together with a, um, a big communications campaign to try to change the habits of the Tijuanenses, the people from Tijuana, against plastic, one use plastic, which everybody in your audience should help do, yeah. uh, not to use plastic, to reduce the amount of plastic they use and to reuse the plastic they already have a lot of times and then recycle it. The water, it gets better and worse um, because they were, uh, you know, the government gave green light to constructions, developments without any hookup to, to uh, sewage. Yeah. So, they have this big, these are not small rivers that are going into the Tijuana River yeah. and that are, have organic matter. And then you have industry who at night open gates of their industry and puts toxic waste in the river. So, you know, the Mexican government has to get really tough. And, um, and we have good people there that have tried, but we have a whole bureaucracy that, you know. <laughs> The thing it's complicated, right? Well, I mean, yes, and we are corrupt. At least we know we are, and these people get bought off. Uh, yeah. We have to fight it here in the US. Nobody wants to accept that that's happening, but it is, and it's a different way because yeah. here you do in elections, you need a lot of money. Who's giving it to you if you are against the industry? Who who will give it to you or yeah. against the millionaires? It's a big yeah. problem. Yeah. Well, an industry has to be part of that. I mean, you. Oh, you, yeah. You, we are working with Coca Cola yeah. to, to recycle that. Yes. We yeah. cannot solve this, not the NGOs and, yeah. and society. We need to be together. Government, private sector has to yeah. be definitely a part of this and just get the consciousness that their kids, like us, poor, rich, or whatever, need oxygen. And it's not yeah. a joke anymore. And, you know, yeah. we cannot breathe or eat money. So come on. Wake up and let's do our part. Everybody, yes, industry. So one of the things that stood out for me when you were talking in your interview was that, um, you know, we have we have communities in Canada. I know in the U.S. they say, well, there's, you know, we they pump raw sewage into waterways, and they they don't seem to think that's an issue. And and I have such a disconnect because I think even if you think you're treating some of that sewage, like I still think there has to be challenges and we need to start questioning, you know, is it really the only way to do things? Are there not better ways? There to are definitely, there are better ways. First of all, we should, we can clean that water even to drink today with the technology. And this, you know, now we are, climate change is making things drier. And we're going to have big times of drought. Let's reuse the water. Why are you putting good water, sweet water, we call it in Spanish, agua dulce, you know, and, you know, regular water in the ocean, and then trying to desalinate the ocean. Desalination yeah. plants, desalinated water is super expensive. It's millions of dollars to take out of electricity, to talk out the, the, the salt. Treat this water and reuse it. Yeah. We should not be putting any water into the ocean. Let's begin with that. that yeah. Well, Faye, before we wrap up, is there anything else you wanted to mention uh, as far as the work you're doing or how people can get involved in supporting the work? Yes, yes. Support us, help us. We cannot do it alone. Again, everybody, this is our, our global war. We're all fighting together from our local uh, uh, base. Uh, and even home, our home is our first base. So reduce plastic, the use of plastic, 
uh, reduce, uh, don't buy plastic things, try, you know, we don't need a bananas or, or tomatoes that are in a, in a plastic thing with plastic, go to the bananas and put them in something, bring your bags to the, it's not rocket science. We all know what we have to do. We all can do it. And if you love your children and grandchildren or don't have children, because you know, what kind of world are we going to leave them? So everybody can do it. Go to walcos.org in Spanish, Costa Salvaje, one word, Walcos, one word, dot org. Help us. You know how. Little donations are as important as big donations. And if you live where we work, volunteer. And you have any ideas, write to us. We are open to suggestions, new ideas, communication ideas, companies who do videos. Everybody can help us. So we want to, to, to get across this message to the world. We need all the help we can get from everybody. Well, thanks, Faye, and thanks for the work you're doing to bring attention to issues that, that we all need to care about. So I appreciate your time today.